Today we're working on Gavotte from Mignon from Suzuki Book 2. Welcome back. Welcome to the studio. My name is Cassie and I'm a professional violist and teaching artist. So today we're working on the Gavotte from Mignon and there's lots of new techniques. So we're going to practice those first before we run through the piece slowly and then we'll run through it at tempo. There's lots of new techniques in this piece, so we're going to take them one at a time. Up first is the measured trill. This is in measure five of the piece. So we're going to practice that first. Let's go to playing position. I'm going to set my first finger on the A string, and my first finger always stays down. My second finger is going to hop right next to it in a very specific rhythm. Listen first. Let's just do that a couple times in a row. Ready? Go. Again, go. Be sure that when your second finger goes down, you're working from the bass knuckle. So you're plopping from bass knuckle. That's what this looks like in playing position. And you should be able to hear that finger plop. So we're going to try those two measures together as printed. Let's go to playing position. Set your first finger. One, two, ready, go. So essentially it's the same thing twice, right? About midway down the page, we also have a new finger. We've got a low first finger on the D string, or E flat. We're gonna start directly at the passage that has the regular first finger and then the low first finger, E flat. So find that on your page. Let's go to playing position. And I'm starting with the regular first finger first, which is the higher one, or the one that's further up the neck. Now low one, so where your one usually goes, your one's going to slide backwards, or reach backwards, to play that E flat. Let's try that again. Regular one. that it's still one because they've got that E flat printed. And then E natural is just that regular first finger that we know. So let's try that passage again. We're starting from that regular first finger and then make sure it's low first finger when it says E flat. Ready? Go. Low one. Watch out for that when it comes. It's about midway down the page. The next new thing that we have in this piece is a new scale or a new key, E flat major. And that appears again in that same area where we had that E flat. So we're going to learn the E flat major scale, the finger pattern, just for the, the octave that begins on low one on the D string. So we've got low one, not touching two, not touching three, and then a low four A flat. And it's the exact same finger pattern on the A string. Low one, not touching two, not touching three, E flat. So our notes are E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, E flat. So let's practice that scale. We're going to do two quarter notes per note. So it will sound like this. So let's do that scale together. Go to playing position, find your low one, so not regular one, scooch it back towards the peg box, and let's try that scale E flat. descending and I won't say the notes this time. So start on low 4 E flat. The 
The second half of the piece uses that scale, so we just need to know it. We have two more techniques. So we have to transition from arco to pizzicato. So arco is using your bow, and pizzicato is using your finger to pluck the string. And that happens in the very last line of the piece. So we're going to practice that, isolate it. You can check it's four measures from the end. So we're still bowing at this point. Our first three notes in that measure, up, up, and then I have to stick out my pointer finger to pluck. So the only thing that changes from arco to plucking is my pointer finger sticks out. There are some instances where we'll have time to grab our bow. I call this pincher position, but we don't have enough time for this one. So let's try that measure again. Set your fourth finger for arco first. Up, up. Pointer finger comes out, lands on the D string. And then the last two things we have are chords. So we're gonna use our pointer finger again to strum in a diagonal manner across the string from our lowest string to our highest. So I'm anchoring on G and then I have to change my fingers to go to the correct notes, but same idea, anchoring on C and diagonally across the strings. Now when I pluck, we don't wanna go very into the string. We're gonna be on the surface of the string. So let's try that. Set yourself up for that very first chord. We're going to anchor our pointer finger on the G string and we're just going to pluck a few times. Anchor again. Anchor. And let's try the last chord. So your one and two go down and you're anchoring on C. Let's put all that together. We're going to go back to the arco of four measures before the end and we're going to transition into pizzicato, and then we're going to do our strums for the last two notes. So set your four, set your bow on the string. Ready? Go. Set. Set. Let's try that one more time. Set your fourth finger. Ready? Go. So there's so many new techniques in this piece, it would be a really great idea to review all of that before you try to put it into context. The next thing we're going to do is play through the piece at a slow tempo. So let's go to playing position, and I'm going to count one, two, one in our tempo because we start on beat two, it's a pickup measure. One, two, one. <laughs>
played it slow, we had a chance to integrate all of those new elements. We're going to play it at tempo. Let's go to playing position. And same thing, I'll count one, two, one, and we'll play. One, two, one. Thanks so much for joining me today. I really hope this was useful. If you have any questions or comments or videos you'd like me to cover in the future, please comment below because I do read those and respond. And I'll see you next time. Happy practicing.